Hello Jesus House and welcome to this service. We'd like to start off this service with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for a time like this where we can come boldly before your throne of grace and mercy. We magnify your name, we glorify your name. We say that there is truly none like you. We ask that your will for our lives be done and that this service will give us what we need, O oh God, in order to make the right decisions, the right choices in our life. Father, we thank you. We thank you because you, we know that you are in control. And we thank you because we know that your love will continue to fill our hearts today and your presence will fill our homes. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Thank you for listening. And we would like to introduce our guest minister, Chevelle Franklin, who will lead us in worship. Enjoy. Jesus House London, it is indeed a joy to be back home again. Indeed, I call myself family. I love you all so much. And I'm so honored to be here one more time to lead worship. Uh, I want to take this time out to greet two of God's general in the house, Pastor Agu and Pastor Doc. God bless you. We love you and appreciate the gift of God on your life, the anointing, and we bless God for you. Jesus House, can you join me in worship? Yeah. Right where you are, just lift your hands and begin to tell him something wonderful. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how grateful you are that you are alive right here in the land of the living, just love on him, just let the fruit of your lips bless him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. have won the victory, the victory, my hallelujah, you have won it all for me, death could not hold you down. Seated in majesty, you are the risen King. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You have won the victory. Yeah. 
my King. Hallelujah. In what you hear, let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your us a spirit of fear but of power love and of a sound mind and we walk in the boldness we walk in the power that has already been given to us hallelujah yeah yeah 
you unravel me with a melody. You surrounded me with a song. Ah, deliverance from my enemies to Lord. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into the family. Your blood flows through. Oh, See, so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me. We sing that bridge again. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me so I can stand and sing. I am a child. God, yes I am, I am a child of God, yes I am, yes I am a child, well the sun set free is free indeed, yeah, I am a child, no longer bound, no longer bound, I am a child of God watch me walk in boldness I am a child of God walk in your confidence I am a child of God walk in your freedom walk in your liberty I am a child of God no more chains holding I am a child of God, yeah, yeah, I am a child of God. Yes, you. 
Thank you so much, Cheryl, for that amazing time just spent worshipping in God's presence. And now we've come to the part of the service where we'll be preparing for a revival for this nation. And you know, when I started to think about revival, I started to feel a bit disheartened because I was wondering how can I play a role in revival and taking the gospel into the land when I'm stuck at home most of my time like most of you I'm working from home so I find the opportunities to go out and to speak to people and minister to people just aren't there like they were pre-lockdown life but then the Holy Spirit just reminded me that you know where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be and what did he mean by that simply he meant that when we started praying for revival as a church, we had no way of knowing or predicting what was to come. We had no way of knowing that we would be in this situation. We find ourselves that COVID was coming and it would bring not just a national lockdown, but a global lockdown across the world. But the Holy Spirit knew and God knew. And because they knew, they made plans for how to get us through revival. They made plans for how exactly it is that we are what exactly it is we're supposed to be doing at this moment in time and ways in which we can still minister to people despite where we find ourselves. And then he brought me to the verse in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I'm just going to quickly read it in the NIV version. And it says, For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And I just want to quickly read that again in the NLT version because I, I kind of like this version a little bit better. And it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And the Holy Spirit just reminded me that you might not have known, but we knew lockdown was coming. We knew where you would be in 2021 in in this at this moment in time and because we knew we've already made the plans we've already made plans for, to still bring revival to this land despite what is going on at the moment and our prayer is simply that today that god will begin to show us the opportunities to go and minister to people that are where we when we do go out whether it be where we go for work or even go shopping at the supermarket that we will still have opportunities to minister the gospel to other people and that god will help us to remind us that where we are is exactly where we supposed to be and that is literally what we're going to pray today so let's pray in jesus name amen and father we thank you for the ability to come and fellowship with you we do not take it for granted father the ability we have to just commune with you whenever we want oh god we say thank you for that relationship father we are so so grateful and so father we ask oh god that you'll continually remind us of who we are in you father remind us when we've needed that we are your masterpiece that you created us oh god and because you created us you also created the good works which we are supposed to do you planned them father so father anything that happens to us is not an accident or a mistake oh god there's nothing that can take us away from the plans that you have for us because you have planned them long before we were even born oh god long before we were even on this earth you had them planned and ready to go and for that we say thank you and so father we ask that as we go out and live our lives oh god with restrictions being lifted slowly oh god that you'll begin to present to us opportunities to minister your gospel oh god whether it be talking to our neighbors father whether it be working even though we're working from home or going out to work or whether it be shopping oh god we ask that you will give us opportunities to minister your word oh god give us the opportunity to show the light that is you that shines within us oh father father we pray that you'll continually help us remember who we are oh god that you remind us that we are your masterpiece oh god that father you we are your handiwork oh lord and that means that each and every single one of us is uniquely created and designed with purpose oh god and that purpose plays into revival in this nation father father we thank you that as we go about our lives oh god we will know who we are oh god and we'll walk with the boldness and assertiveness knowing that you created us oh god and that we are created to do your work on this earth and father we just say thank you and for our, lastly father we ask that you'll keep us humble oh lord as we go out and minister your word oh god and we'll continually show your light oh god help each and every single one of us be a living testimony of who you are on this earth father and that no matter where we find ourselves who you are will just exude from within us, oh God, that will exude through us, oh Father. And as we draw people to you, oh God, give us the tools and the wisdom, oh God, to bring them to you, oh Father. Give them, us the wisdom and the tools to say the right thing at the right time in the right way, oh Father. Father, also give us the boldness and the courage to speak about you, oh Lord. This world 
aims to stifle and oppress those who truly speak out for who you are and father we ask that you'll give us an unnatural courage and an unnatural boldness to simply stand for who you are in this land oh father that we will stand with no apologies oh god unapologetic for who we are in christ jesus and so father we just say thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you we do not take it for granted for in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen thank you and enjoy the rest of service Hi, Jesus House. I'm sure most of us are aware about the sad and unfortunate events in St. Vincent in the Caribbean islands. On Friday, the 9th of April in the morning, the volcano on the island, La Soufrière, um, erupted, um, sending ash up to 35,000 feet into the sky. Clouds of ash and smoke um, have been pouring over the island of St. Vincent, um, the Grenadines primarily, but also neighboring islands like St. Lucia and Barbados. You know, I saw pictures the other day and this beautiful Caribbean island now is covered in ash and smoke. It looks gray and looks like it has been hit by a desert storm. The United Nations tell us that it is a humanitarian crisis as 16,000 people have been evacuated from the island to neighboring islands and um, they are now temporary refugees. There's still thousands of people on the island that are staying put and they are having to grapple with so many things. They're having to grapple with a volcano that is on a daily basis still erupting ash and smoke. The the um, challenges, um, the, the health challenges that come with that, um, inhaling ash and, and smoke, which is causing respiratory difficulties and skin irritations and other health challenges, um, frequent power outages. Um, there's no water to most of, no water to supply to the bulk of the island. Um, the airspace over St. Vincent is closed. And alongside this is the very present COVID-19 pandemic. It really is a difficult and a dire situation, but I am reminded that we serve a God who is watching and a God who is in full control and a God who is mindful. I'm also reminded of how the disciples were in the boat and the wind and the waves um, buffeted the boat and there was a risk of it capsizing and them drowning and Jesus woke up and said quiet be still and the wind died down and it was completely calm so church join me today as we pray for the nation of St. Vincent's the nation of Grenadines and other neighboring islands that have been affected Heavenly Father we bring the nation of St. Vincent before you the land and all the people in it we pray that as Jesus rebuked the wind and the waves and said, quiet, be still, that Father in heaven, you will speak to the volcano La Soufrière and say, quiet, be still, be silent, erupt no more, do not release ash and smoke anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus, La Soufrière, hear the word of the Lord. We thank you, Father, that there have been no loss of human lives. And we declare that there will be no loss of human lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your healing, for all those who are suffering from the effects of the ash and the smoke. Father, we ask that you will heal their bodies, Father God. Heal every single part of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for the continual safe evacuation of the people to neighboring islands. And Father, we speak a blessing over all these islands that have opened their doors to the refugees, oh God. Father, we pray for your protection, Father, for your provision, for your peace, for your comfort as they stay as temporary refugees in these islands, oh God. Father, for those that have decided to stay for one reason or the other, Father, be with them. Father, you said you are with us always and you will never leave us nor forsake us no matter what we go through. We lift up the Prime Minister, Ralph Gonzalez, Father God. Father, we pray for him and his cabinet. We pray for wisdom, for strength, for your guidance, for your favour. And Father, we pray for a restoration of the social amenities on the island, for restoration of electricity, of water, of food, of, of their hospitals, for medical supplies, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
And in this season, Father, where you are doing a new thing, Father, we pray for the new in St. Vincent, in Grenadine, and the neighboring islands, Father, St. Lucia and Barbados. And Father, we pray for healing and restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus House, for praying. Um, the Lord has heard and will do mighty things in these lands in the name of Jesus. And as we've prayed, we also want to be the hands and feet of Jesus by lending our support towards these nations. And to do this, we would like to ask you to, to give, um, to make a donation. Um, Jesus House, um, through the team Global Hands, which is the international social action arm of Jesus House, will be working alongside uh, supporting organizations that are working on the ground in bringing relief and assistance to the people of St. Vincent, Grenadine and associated nearby nations. And so I'd like to encourage us to give. Um, nothing, like I say, is too small and nothing, of course, is ever too large. Um, the details on how to give will pop up on the screen. But, you know, you can click on the link that has come up on the screen now and, you know, give your donation or you can scan the QR code. Or if you want to give a donation via a bank transfer, the details are also on the screen. And we just like to ask you to just specify Global Hands dash SVG. SVG is St. Vincent um, and Grenadine. So if we just note that, um, note that on our bank transfer. And likewise, if you want to give by text the same thing, please do indicate where it is going to um, Jesus House Global Hands SVG. And I'd like to thank you so much, Jesus House. Thank you for your prayers and I'd like to encourage you to keep on praying. And thank you for your generous giving and donations. The Lord will bless you and yours. And as you have made a way for those that at this point in time are going through a difficult situation, is the same way God will meet you at the point of your need when you need it. So thank you so much again, Jesus House. God bless and keep you. Goodbye. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So ladies and gentlemen, just want to encourage us to continue to pray for our brothers and our sisters in St. Vincent's and the Grenadines. And then as we have been encouraged to, uh, let's also support them materially and just send help as best as possible. And God will bless you as we just reach out to our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, wanted to once again appreciate the gift of God in Chevelle. Chevelle, thank you so much uh, for leading us in worship. God bless you and your husband. God bless you. Amen. And uh, before we go into the word, I uh, just wanted to mention that uh, Pastor Agu sends his love and his uh, greetings. He's away on a very well-deserved break as we speak. Uh, so yes, he sends his love to every single one of you. And um, so let's go into the word today. Let's just say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we're so grateful for the privilege we have in you, the privilege to have you as God, the privilege to serve you, and at this point, the privilege to speak your word. Sweet Holy Spirit, we ask that you please come and take absolute control. Speak to us, teach us, open our eyes to your word, O oh God. And let our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be enthroned in our lives and in all that we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you please turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 8. Very interesting story that uh, we want to use to challenge ourselves in what God would have us do in this season. Luke chapter 8, and I'll be reading from verses 22 to 25 in the New Living Translation. 
Luke, Luke 8, 22-25. It says, One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves and suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Then he asked them, where is your faith? And the disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Where is your faith? He asked them. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, I believe with all of my heart that we're entering one of the most incredible seasons of our lives where we are going to see uh, tangible manifestations of the power of God and the promises of God fulfilled in all of our lives. I'm very excited about this season that we find ourselves and one of the words that God has been speaking to me constantly and I hope you receive this word as well in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse, verse 9. It says, I has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the mind of man what God is planning to do. I paraphrase that scripture. And I say this, ladies and gentlemen, because I feel God is challenging us in this season. Uh, we have been praying, birthing the plans and purposes of God. And we must continue to pray and birth the plans and purposes of God. But I feel that God is challenging us that now is the time to begin to walk the walk of faith. Now is the time to walk in the faith for the new that he has been speaking into our lives. You know, um, uh, Pastor Agu has said quite, quite a number of times, I'm sure you, you, m most of us know this by heart now, that faith is the currency of the kingdom of God. Faith is the currency of the Christian walk that you and I walk. It's the mechanism that undergirds our relationship with God. You know, none of us have seen God. None of us have seen God. But we have faith in God. And we have faith in the promises, the ability of God to bring his plans and purposes to pass. It is the operational method by which the promises of God are received, ladies and gentlemen. And I feel that we, 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 as we come into the season, it's a time for you and I to begin to demonstrate our faith in God so that God can respond to our faith. You know, the Bible is full of stories of how God responds to the faith of his people. You know, I, I love the story in Matthew chapter 9. Uh, the, the Bible says, I, I paraphrase and then I'll read part of the scripture. Uh, in Matthew chapter 9, the Bible says that Jesus was in a house. And people came to him, you know, because he was healing the sick and all that. And the Bible says that four, four friends brought a friend of theirs who was paralyzed, brought him to the house. But because they couldldn't get in, because the place was jam-packed, you won't believe they went and dug a hole in the roof and lowered their friend uh, before Jesus. Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 and 2. It says, Jesus climbed into a boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Verse 2, some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, be encouraged, my child, your sins are forgiven. You know, numerous stories that, that I can uh, show you, and I'm sure you know most of these stories. Uh, let's look at another one that we're all familiar with, Luke chapter 8, verses 45 to 48. You know the story of the woman with the issue of blood who had been plagued with uh, heavy bleeding for 12 years. And um, it says, let me read from verse verse. 40, 45. Um, it says, who touched me? And I, I, I've jumped forward because uh, the woman by this time has gone through the crowd. She says, if only I can touch him. Jesus says, who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. And Peter said, 
Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, listen to this. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Verse 48, daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. You know, I love um, one translation that says, Daughter, go in peace. Your suffering is over. Can I speak into someone's life today and just declare that as we step out in faith in this season, believing God for his word, your suffering, whatever those challenges are, they will be over in the mighty name of Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, the reason is that faith, as I've said, is a kingdom principle. God himself established this with the father of our faith. In Genesis chapter 12, and I'm just laying a foundation, Genesis chapter 12, reading the New Living Translation. It says, the Lord had said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. Ladies and gentlemen, God speaks a word to Abraham and says, leave, I need you to leave where you are, your family, uh, all the things that you're used to. I need you to leave all of that and come to a place that I will show you. He hadn't shown him yet, but the Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had instructed. And therein, we, we, we get the foundational principle of our, Christian, of, of our faith in our Christian walk. Everything, ladies and gentlemen, that God does is always preceded by his word. And what a joy when a child of God hears the word of God. As we have heard the word of God. This is the exciting thing, ladies and gentlemen. No one in this church, no one that's listening or has been listening, can say that they have not heard the word of God that he has spoken to us as a people in Isaiah 43, verses 18 to 19. Uh, let me read it in the New King James. It says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Ladies and gentlemen, if they woke you up in the middle of night, you should be able to say that I know God has spoken to me. I know God has spoken to my church that he's doing a new thing. And the beauty, ladies and gentlemen, is that once we hear the word of God, God expects us to respond to his word by faith, to walk into his word, into the manifestation of his word by faith. The same way that, that Abraham did. Now for Abraham, it was to leave his country, to leave his family, to leave his relatives. For you and I, ladies and gentlemen, God is saying he's, he's doing a new thing. And guess what? It will be a new thing that will be specific to each one of us. The new thing God wants to do in your life will be different from what he wants to do in my life. But what God has said is that he is doing a new thing. And he expects us to respond to this word by faith. You know, I, I, I love the story in Matthew chapter 14. Time doesn't permit me to go into the scripture, but you know the story very well. When, when, when um, Peter was in the boat and Jesus was walking on water and coming towards them, they thought it was a ghost. And then um, Jesus says to them, no, no, it's me, it's me. And then Peter says, Master, if it is you, bid me to come. Peter heard the word, Jesus says, come. And then he stepped on the water. My brothers and my sisters, this is the season for you and I to step on water, to walk in faith that pleases God. Because to accomplish the word of God requires faith. And that's the principal thing that I need you and I to understand. That the promises of God 
Everything that God says, it's accomplished by faith. There's a promise that God keeps every time that he sees faith in the lives of his people. But guess what? There's a converse to that. Because when people don't believe God, when people do not apply faith to the word of God, they then do not receive the promises of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 to 2, I paraphrase. The Bible says that the, the, the word that the people heard, the promise that they heard, that it did not profit them, it did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. And that will not be any one of our portions in the mighty name of Jesus. None of us will miss out on the season of what God wants to do in our lives. And, and somebody might say, yeah, yeah, you know, we, we, we've talked about faith quite a lot, and it's true, we've talked about faith. The challenge for you and I now is not just to talk about faith, not just to hear about faith, but to walk in faith. So somebody might say, okay, w what exactly is faith? For the benefit of repetition, faith is complete trust that God is who he says he is, and that he will do what he says he will do. It's as simple as that. Just complete trust and confidence that God is who he says he is, and that he will do what he says he will do. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, we all know the scripture. But let me read it in the TPT, in the, in the Passion Translation. It says, and without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. Without faith living within us, a, a, a faith that is alive in us, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith, knowing that he is real and that he rewards the faith of those who passionately seek him. You know, I, I love the saying by A.W. Tozer. He says, uh, uh, A.W. Tozer says, he says, God being who he is, cannot cease to be what he is. And being what he is, he cannot act out of character with himself. He is at once faithful and unchanging. So all his words and acts must be and must remain faithful. Ladies and gentlemen, God is who he is. And he is faithful to his word. And what he expects is that we take him at his word. That is what faith is about. Faith is confidence in God's character, confidence in his power, and it is in his promises. You know, I, I put down here that faith is like placing a stake on the character of God. And you can imagine when you say to God, or rather when we demonstrate our faith to God, and we're saying to God that, you know what, I put my confidence in your character and who you are. It's so pleasing to God, ladies and gentlemen. And then the converse, of course, is where, where we either knowingly or knowingly are sending a signal to heaven that, you know, God, I'm not so sure about your character. I'm not so sure about who you are. You can imagine how God feels about that. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, you know this word in Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19, where God says, I'm doing a new thing. If you read from verses 11 to 17, it's actually prefaced with God. It was almost like God trying to convince us because he keeps saying, I am the one, I am he that did this. I'm the one that parted the Red Sea. I'm the one that, it's almost like God saying, you know, I am the one that's speaking. You should be able to have confidence in what I'm saying to you. And I pray somebody will develop confidence in the word of God that is given us today in the mighty name of Jesus. So faith is complete trust in God. But then how, how does faith work? Because it's not just saying I have confidence in the character of God. It's actually also responding by action. Faith is a confident action in response to God's word. And that is the challenge for this new season. That God wants us to begin to respond in action to his word. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The, the, the famous scripture and faith but let me read it in the message bible it says the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in god this faith this trust in god this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living that 
our faith in God, our trust in God, is, the firm, is a firm foundation on which we live our lives. In the, in the TPT, um, Hebrews chapter 1, it says, now faith, bring, now, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. This testimony of faith is what previous generations were commended for. Faith empowers us to see that the universe was created and beautifully coordinated by the power of God's word. He spoke and the invisible gave birth to all that is seen. Ladies and gentlemen, God spoke and the invisible gave birth to all that is seen. Ladies and gentlemen, can I say to you, God has spoken his word. His word will give birth to his plans and purposes in your life, in my life, in this church, in the body of Christ, and in this nation, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So faith must be accompanied, a, a, a belief, a confidence in the character of God must be accompanied by corresponding action uh, that shows that we believe what God has said. You know, I, I was reading this account um, in the book of Luke chapter 1. Very long story, so I'm, I'm not going to go through it. I'll, I'll just paraphrase. It's interesting that in the book of Luke chapter 1, we find two instances where God comes and gives his word. The first was to Zechariah in, in Luke chapter 1 from verses 6 to 20. And you know, when I was reading, I was smiling because the Bible starts by saying that Zechariah was a righteous man. He was a priest in the, you know, in the order of, uh, uh, I think it was Abijah, I'm not sure. sure. He was a priest, a uh, righteous man. And, and I was thinking, man of God. But guess what? The angel... Uh, the angel appears to him and then says, you know what, you've been waiting for a while, but this is what God says. He gives him the word of God and says that you're going to have a child. Listen to what uh, um, Zechariah says in verse 20. Um, he says, how am I, how, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, he says, how will I be sure that this will happen? Considering the fact that I'm a very old man. And then... <laughs> Angel Gabriel says, I am Gabriel. It's almost like saying, what, what are you saying? I came from the presence of God. I brought the word of God. And then he says, since you did not believe, and then you know the rest of the story. But you contrast that, contrast that to uh, a few verses down when he appears to Mary. Again, you know the story. And uh, appears to Mary. And Mary says, almost asking the same question. But ladies and gentlemen, let me say something to you. That faith is not what we speak with our mouth. Faith is something that is in our hearts. And that's where God looks. Because literally the same question. One says, Zechariah says, how am I to be sure that this will happen? Ma Mary says, how is this going to happen considering that I'm a virgin? But somewhere in our Noah... She knew, she heard the word of God, received the word of God, and believed the word of God. That's why in verse 45, when she appeared to her cousin Elizabeth, Elizabeth said this prophetic word to her. It says, blessed are you because you believed. You are blessed because you believe. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we journey into the new, and it's a journey into the new. For some people, you, you know, you've started seeing manifestations of what, what God is doing. For many other people, it's yet to manifest. But then the challenge from God, ladies and gentlemen, is let's start to walk in faith. Let's start to trust God in his word and, and, and create the, the, the platform for the manifestation of his word. So three or four things that I want to challenge us with in the time that we have very quickly. As we journey into, into the new that God has spoken to us. The first thing is that we must pay attention to our faith and grow our faith. I love the way the, the disciples said to Jesus in Luke chapter 17 verse 5. 
They said to him, Lord, increase our faith. And that's because, you know, they'd been seeing things happening. happening. In one minute, they thought they had faith. And then God, uh, Jesus was speaking to them about how to forgive, you know, how, how to extend themselves in their Christian walk. And then they must have thought to themselves that we haven't even started yet. And they said, Lord, teach us how to increase our faith. Every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, has a responsibility to ensure that our faith is growing. And the reason is that the more we encounter God, the more he expects us, our faith in him, to grow. The more we see the hand of God, and who will say that they have not experienced the hand of God? <laughs> who would say that they have not experienced the goodness of God in their lives? But the more we experience God, the more we encounter God, the more he expects our faith to grow. Now, every child of God has a measure of faith that they start off with. You know, to become a child of God requires faith. It's called saving faith. That we believe that God is God and Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for your sins and my sins. That's saving faith. It's enough faith that brings you into a relationship with God. But then God's expectation is that our faith is growing all the time to give him room to do whatever it is that he wants to do in our lives. You know, I, I, I uh, time, time doesn't permit, um, I, was, I was reading the account in the book of Exodus chapter 14. You know the encounter when God parted the Red Sea, and it's interesting, it's one of the examples that he cited in Isaiah 43 before coming to the fact that he's doing a new thing. And um, the Bible says that, after God had parted the Red Sea and they walked through, the children of Israel walked through, through uh, on dry ground and um, the Egyptians were drowned in the water. The Bible says in Exodus 14, 31, it says they put their faith in God. They put their faith in God after they had seen him do. Whereas God wanted them to put their faith in him before he even started doing. And that's where God is calling you and I, ladies and gentlemen. He's saying, I'm doing a new thing. But he says, do you not see it? He's not saying, do we see it physically with our physical eyes? He's saying, do you not see it with your faith eyes? So that you can trust him and walk with him. But then, it wasn't until God had demonstrated his power, the Bible says that they now put their faith in God. But guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Two chapters after that, they were murmuring against God. That's not the way or the kind of faith God expects from us, ladies and gentlemen. If we are going to, if we're going to walk into well, what God would have us uh, walk into. George Muller the, the, is one of the fathers of the faith. Listen to what he says. He says, my faith is the same faith which is found in every believer. It has been increased little by little for the last 26 years. Many times I would have gone insane from worry. I was at peace because my soul believed the truth of God's promises. God's word, together with the whole character of God as he has revealed himself, settles all, all questions. His unchangeable love and his infinite wisdom calmed me. I knew God is able and willing to deliver me. It is written, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things. What's George Muller saying? That every day I see God. Every day I see the manifestation of God's character, his promises, his power in my life. Guess what? My faith increases. And that's why he's, he's been cited as one of the fathers of the faith. Faith is, is, is a spiritual force that relates to a believer's spirit. It's not about our intellect or our mind. It's a spiritual force. And listen to what the Bible says in Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So ladies and gentlemen, in this season, as we go into the new, this is the time for us to immerse ourselves more than ever before in the word of God and then allowing the spirit of God to, to, to build up the word of God in our lives. I, I, I like a, a quote that, that I came across. It says, to increase your faith, cultivate a deeper intimacy with the word and the spirit of God. 
The more I study about faith, this is the quote, the more I come to realize that faith has more to do with our commitment to Jesus Christ than our ability to just believe hard enough. So faith is not saying to myself, I'm going to believe more, more. I'm going to try and believe more. It's, 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 a, it's a function of how close we come to God, how close we get into his word, how we allow the spirit of God to... to, to, to um, to, to magnify the word of God in our lives, magnify the character of God in our lives. So first thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that as we get into the new, as we walk into the new, let us get into the word of God. Let's get into, the, in, into communion, deeper communion with God so that our faith will increase for what God wants to do. The second thing, and very quickly, is that as we step into the new, we must expect the wind. In the, the scripture we, we read at the beginning, Luke chapter 8, it's interesting that it was Jesus that said to them, so he spoke to them and says, let's go to the other side. So it was by the word of God that they went to the other side. But then the Bible tells us that as soon as they got into the boat, that the winds came, high winds, fierce storms, the Bible says. And I say this to say that it is to be expected, ladies and gentlemen, in our Christian walk, our faith will be threatened constantly, constantly. Threatened by the high winds of life circumstances. Everything that the enemy can, can throw at you and I to ensure that he kills our faith or uh, uh, diminishes our faith so that we don't enjoy the best of God. But I want to say to you that high winds can either be external, things that life throws at you, or they can also be internal. Because sometimes we don't realize that our weaknesses, our insecurities, and our limitations, um, I'm reading a quote that, that I read, it says our weaknesses, our insecurities, our limitations often dictate the course of our lives. Many obstacles in our lives are often self-imposed limitations. And you know, I read this and it spoke to me. Uh, by the way, I'm preaching to myself, ladies and gentlemen, because you know, I, 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 I read this and I thought, you know, God, I, I, I hear what you're saying. A lot of winds are not external winds, they're internal winds that we, we allow to, to blow inside us. And of course, the enemy will take advantage and magnify those things. Ladies and gentlemen, if you know that there will be high winds, what do you do? You prepare yourself. You guard yourself. You, you, you go more into God. And that's why in the first point that we said, the whole essence of faith is that our faith increases the more we get into God, where we're looking to God rather than to the circumstances, the winds that are blowing. Very good example, again, in Matthew 14, when, when Peter stepped on the water, instead of looking to Jesus, you all know the story, he was looking to the winds. So ladies and gentlemen, as we step into the new, you want to quell the internal waves, the high waves, the, you know, the, 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 the things that have been speaking to you and I to say that you can't and you're not able and all that. But guess what? By the grace of God, in this new season, we will accomplish everything that God wants us to accomplish. Number three, very quickly. So the first thing is we must grow our faith. The second thing is expect the winds and quell the winds. The third thing is that we must also prepare for the new. Isaiah 54, um, let me read this scripture. Isaiah 54, um, I'll read it in the New Living Translation. It's another word that God has spoken and that is encouraging me in this season. It says, enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, and spare no expense. For you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will occupy other nations and resettle the ruined cities. It was a prophetic word. There was a prophetic word to the people of Israel that required a faith response. It says, enlarge your house, build an addition. And it says, because you will soon be. Not because you're already, but you will soon be. 
He's saying, prepare yourself for the new. You know, I, uh, I, uh, when, when I was in medical school, I, I, the, the three years of clinicals before you graduate, by the time I was in my first year of clinicals, I knew that I was going to do surgery, that I was going to be a surgeon, because I just loved doing things with my hands. You know, I didn't like all the theory and stuff. I, you know, I li liked to you know, do practical things, dissect and all that. So I was so certain I was going to do surgery. But then in my final year, when I was doing my final rotation, my final rotation was obstetrics and gynecology. And I'll never forget my first day in the labor ward when I saw this miracle of a baby coming out of a mother. It was so fascinating, ladies and gentlemen. You know, just seeing something that was nothing. Because nine months previously, that baby was nothing. It was an egg and a sperm. Something that you couldn't even see except with a microscope. And then nine months later, you now see this magnificent creation of God coming out a new life. But guess what? That wasn't the only thing that fascinated me. The other thing that fascinated me was how a woman nine months before was, you know, slim and, you know, all, all that. And then nine months after, she has enlarged her, what the Bible says, enlarge your house, build an addition. You, you understand? Ap ap apologies, ladies. Um, and, and all that because the mother needed to prepare to make room for this baby that was going to be born. Ladies and gentlemen, I felt God saying to me as I was preparing, God is the one that is saying he wants to do a new thing. All he's just asking for are the vessels that he's going to use. You and I are his vessels, uh, his instruments to bring out his plans and purposes for our lives and for everything else around us. But it requires that we prepare. It requires that we make room for what God wants to do. It requires, you know, I love the scripture that, that's, that says that you can't put new wine into old wine skin. It requires that we become new wine skins. It requires that we become new creatures. You know, it requires that our, our characters change, change. You know, we started a study in um, a Bible study last week about character. You know, the, the, the fact that it is one of the greatest expectations of God that you and I change so that we can reflect the, gl the glory of God. And then the last thing, and I end with this, is that faith requires that it grows so that it pleases God. Faith requires that we are mindful of the winds and quell the winds. Faith requires that we prepare and make room. But faith requires confident action. It requires a response. You know, time doesn't permit me, but I, I, I love, um, you know, when, when the, the 12 spies went to spy the land, God had said to them, I am taking you into, that was another prophetic word, I'm taking you into the land of your promises. And in, 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 interestingly, ladies and gentlemen, we've been journeying into the plans and purposes, the land of God's promises for our lives over the last year. So God says, sends the 12 spies and to go and look at the land. They come back and they say, <laughs> it's, a, it's a good land, but we can't do it. We can't do it. So they were looking at their circumstances rather than the God that had spoken to them or promised them. But I love in, um, I, I, I think it's in, uh, I'm trying to remember, Numbers, I can't remember, the, the, the Numbers 13.30, that's it, Numbers 13.30. I love when the Bible says that Caleb and Joshua quieting them and says, let us go up at once and possess it. We are well able to. And that should be your refrain and my refrain in this season, ladies and gentlemen. God has spoken. I'm doing a new thing. Let us get up, get up at once and go and possess it. Let's not be like those who, who will give bad reports and say, oh, we've heard it before. They told us last year. They told us two years ago. But God is birthing a new thing. You know, and, and all that. Let's not listen to the negative reports. Can somebody say, let's get up at once and go and possess this land, this new, that God has spoken into our lives. And as I 
end, ladies and gentlemen, the life of faith is lived by following an unseen God into unknown territory. I'll say that again. The life of faith is lived by following an unseen God into unknown territory. That's how faith works. He says, do you not see it? I will make a way in the wilderness. I'm going to do spectacular things in your life. Someone should say amen to that. I'm going to do spectacular things in your church, in this nation. We believe God, we hear his God, but guess what? We step forward by faith to do whatever it is the Spirit of God nudges us to do. It's following an unseen God into unknown territory. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the season for you and I to step out by faith for the new. I, I want to end with, uh, with uh, a story that, that I, I came across uh, not too long ago. Um, it's a story of a gentleman. He was a bus, bus driver, but he was quite short, you know, five foot three. You know, I'm, I'm um, almost six foot. So you can imagine five foot three, he would be like, like that, um, small, smallish man, and a thin bus driver. So the story goes that um, this guy, he would, you know, resume at work, drive his bus down the street, you know, picking up the various passengers. He did that every day. That was his work. And then one day, one guy, massive, six foot, six foot uh, eight, eight, six foot eight, yes, that's it, very muscular, got onto the boat, onto the bus. And then as he was passing, um, you, you know, you're supposed to pay uh, in, in the bus. And then he says, um, he says, Big John, no pay. His name was Big John. He says, Big John, no pay. And he said it with a scowl and then went and sat down. And then the bus driver says, ah, why would you do that now? You're supposed to pay. Guess what? The next day, um, he, he would pass through the same place. Big John would get, get in and then he would pass by and say, Big John, no pay. And he did this for weeks and weeks. By this time, this guy was, you know, he, you know, in fact, he was beginning to lose sleep into it because he thought, you know, this is not fair. This guy's taking advantage because of his size and all that. He's oppressing me. I don't like it. So guess what? He decides, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. So the story goes that this guy, the bus driver, starts to go to the gym. He starts to build up his muscles, you know, working out. And then after a few weeks and months, he too started to develop some muscles. Don't, don't forget he's still five foot three but uh, starts to develop muscles and then one day you know starts to feel good with himself so one day big john enters and the bus driver is ready for him and then as soon as he comes he says big john no pay and the bus driver backs at him and says why big john no pay and then big john says he just pulls out his bus pass he said Be because big john has bus pass and the moral of the story, ladies and gentlemen, is that we spend a lot of time fearful, fearing what could be, what cannot be, what the challenge is, what I cannot do. But the moment we step out, we see God work in our favor. Ladies and gentlemen, my challenge to you as we continue this journey of the new is... God is looking for new faith for the new promise. New faith, increased faith for the new that he wants to do in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And like the Bible says in the book of Joshua, for as long as we focus on God, the Bible says that, 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 that the, the, the priests carried the ark as they crossed the Jordan. And... Uh, the, the, the people were instructed to just keep their eyes on the ark. As soon as the priest stepped into the Jordan, the Jordan parted. For as long as we keep our eyes on God, and for as long as we're responding with confident faith in, to the word of God, the waters will part for you and I, and you and I will enter into every promise that God has spoken concerning us. Isaiah 50, as I end, Isaiah 50, verse 7, in the New Living Translation, it says, Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone 
determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. Let me read that again, ladies and gentlemen. May this be someone's refrain. Because the sovereign Lord helps me as we go into this new, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. As we end, I... I I just want to say a prayer for every single one of you, including myself. Because like the disciples, whilst preparing this, I was saying to God, Lord, please increase my faith. Please increase my faith. I, I really need the faith to step out, to begin to do all the things that you've called me to do and to make room for you to do all that you want to do. And so, Father, Lord God Almighty, I, I pray for all my brothers and my sisters, every single person that is, whose heart is reaching out to you, we say, Lord, we believe your word, but increase my faith so that I can step out on your word. Sweet Holy Spirit, we know you are the only one that can quicken faith in our hearts through your word and by your power. And even now, Holy Spirit, I ask that you please come upon all my brothers and my sisters. Come upon me, Holy Spirit. Increase our faith, O oh God. Help us to walk with you, not against you, in this journey into the new. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then for somebody out there who might be saying, I, I, I want to walk this walk of faith, but I don't know where to start from because I don't have a relationship with this God. It, it's interesting and it's actually good news if this is you because even the starting point of our relationship with God is by faith. As I said earlier, it's a simple act of saying, I believe in God. I believe God exists. And I want a relationship with God. I want a relationship with Jesus. I want him to be my Lord and my master. That is the beginning of the faith walk. And it is when we come into a relationship with him, the seven faith that I talked about, that we then journey with him in the journey of faith of our lives. So if there's anyone out there, you're saying, you know what? I, I, I want to start this walk with God. I want to start this walk of faith with God. The starting point, like I said, is for you to invite him into your heart. So if that is you, I, 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 I'll just lead you in a simple prayer. If you just say this prayer after me, just say, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Today, I come to you and I ask you, to be my God. I believe in you and I believe in your son Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins so that I may have a relationship with you. And so today I confess my sins and I start a new life in you and with you. Please accept me as your son as your daughter, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it's as simple as that. If you said that prayer, that is it. That is the beginning of your faith walk. That's the beginning of your relationship with, with God because you've said that prayer by faith, believing God, accepting Jesus in your heart. And um, if you've said that prayer, the next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do, again, remember it's a faith walk, is that I'd like you to please indicate that uh, you said the prayer. If you look in your chat box, if you're uh, JH online um, and there's a chat box, you would see a button that asks if you, if you raised your hand, if you've uh, uh, said this prayer of faith. And if you did, just press that button. Press that button that says you're raising your hand um, because you've committed your life to God. You started this journey. Just, just press that button. That will enable us to know that you said the prayer. Um, it will also come up with a form 
that will ask for some of your details uh, that will allow us to come alongside you and journey with you in your uh, faith journey, in your journey uh, of faith with God. And if you did that, congratulations. Heaven is rejoicing um, on, on your behalf uh, because of this step of faith that you've taken in Jesus' name. God bless you. God bless you. And, and just looking forward to an exciting journey of faith. Ladies and gentlemen, let's all look forward to the new that God has spoken concerning every single one of us. And none of us will miss out on the plans and purposes of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. It's our offering time. And today I'm going to be sharing two scriptures with you. The first one is taken from the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12. And I'm going to be reading verses 2 to 3 in the New Living Translation. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. That's the first scripture. It says that you are blessed and you will be a blessing. The second scripture this today I'm taking from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter six. And I'm going, to be read, I'm going to be reading verses 7 to 18 in the New Living Translation. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who received the promise could be perfectly sure that he will never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. And I stop there. The first one said, you are blessed and you will be a blessing. The second scripture said that it is impossible for God to lie because he has promised. He has promised. Our God is a promise keeper. With everything going on around us, with the economy, with all of our finances all over the place. For some people, it is all over the place. They don't know how they're going to make ends meet. And there's so many things going on. But I want to assure you today that God does not lie. He has said that you are blessed and you will be a blessing. So I want you to bear these things at the back of your mind as you give your offering today that you are blessed and nothing, nothing can reverse that. So I want us to pray. And after we finished praying, I want you to give your offering with that in your mind. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your promises. Your promises that we are blessed and we will be a blessing. And Lord God Almighty, as we give, O oh God, let it be good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Let it be used for the expansion of your kingdom. Let it be used to bless others that do not have even as much as we do. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. A video is going to come up now give you the, the different options by which you can give. God bless you. God bless your generosity. Amen.
the fruits of your lips bless you and say we give you glory father we bless you we hallelujah we give you all the glory my heavenly so we we It's you that we love, it's you that we love, Jesus, it's you that we adore, hey, it's you that we love, my God, you we adore, it's you that we love, only you, always you. Forever, forever, it's you. Day. Always and forever. My living fountain, it's you alone. You, 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 we love, we adore. It's you that we love. Hey, it's you that we love. You, 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 you. Yes, you will love. Rose of Sharon. I'm Tineke, and this is 7 News. The Aruna Project needs your help. 
we are looking for individuals who can help us in the following areas. Delivery drivers. We need delivery drivers to help us with our deliveries. Legal. Do you have a legal background and can you give us a few hours a week? Call center. We need virtual call handlers to answer calls that come in. And at the moment, we are getting so many calls. Food bank. We need extra hands to help us in the food bank. If you are interested, please email aruna at jesushouse.org.uk or you can call 0203 8873982 The Mind and Emotional Wellbeing Support Muse the helpline is open 24 hours a day 7 days a week to support anyone that is dealing with mental and emotional challenges If you would like to speak to someone we are just a phone call away Please remember you're not alone Simply call us on 0208 820 Festival of Life has two vacancies, one for an accounts assistant and one for a CSR and events coordinator. If you would like further information on either of these vacancies, please send an email to hr at festivaloflife.org.uk by the 25th of April 2021. The Rock IG live sessions take place at 3 p.m. on Instagram. The handle is at R-U-C-J-H and it's for young people over the age of 19 and or in university. The Rock Zoom sessions are from 10.30 to 11.30 on Sundays, and these are for our young people aged between 13 and 18. To register and join the Zoom sessions, please go to jh7.uk forward slash rock zoom. Please note that the Rock Instagram service will be replaced by Zoom services from the 2nd of May. This means that the last Instagram service for over 18s will hold on Sunday the 25th of April, and then on the Sunday, the 2nd of May, from 1.30 at 1.30, the new sessions will be accessible on Zoom. To get to those, you need to go to jh7.uk forward slash rock Zoom. The link for the children's service, which takes place straight after this, is jh7.uk forward slash kfsrv. Do join us for our weekly Bible study classes on Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. You will need to register and you can do so by going to jh7.uk forward slash Bible studies, after which you'll get an email with joining instructions. So please look out for that. Please do not forget to pray for Barbados, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Pray for God's guidance, his support and his provision. Well, that's it for this week's 7 News. If you're not following us on social media, why not? Our handles are at Jesus House UK and at Jesus House London. Please do follow us because that's where we put a lot of information that will be relevant to you. God bless you and have a fantastic week. I don't know about you, but I think that has been another outstanding service. Great worship, great word, and a time of prayer unto the Lord. You know, I love this Bible reading that excites me a lot about the church. David writing uh, in Psalm 122 verse 1 uh, is a song of ascent. Uh, the, the Bible read says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go into the house of the Lord. There was this excitement about David writing and the people are so excited about going to the house of the Lord. And that's why I'm so excited about anyone who has joined us today in this service uh thank you for joining us but particularly i want to welcome those who are joining us for the very first time irrespective of where you're watching us today either on your laptop either on your desktop either on your bed top either on your pyjama top uh either on your tablets or your phone wherever you are watching us today or whichever part of the world you are uh, asia europe africa america that you're watching us particularly if you're watching us for the very first time we want to say thank you you could have chosen any church or any platform but you chose us at jesus house thank you for being with us today and here's one thing we love you to do because we like to follow up with you you will see a drop down box uh 
underneath your tablet or your laptop or whatever you are using which says a uh, click and a qr code you, you want to click that or you want to scan the qr code it will give you further information on how we can engage with you and now you can be part of this wonderful family called jesus house and you know that time has come when we now have to bring the service to close and by pray. And I want to pray for each one of you, whichever country you are watching us, whichever tablet or you are using. And, and I believe that God moves through the hairwaves and God will hear our prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an outstanding and amazing day. And so as we are released into a new week, I pray the blessings of the Lord upon every man, every woman, every boy and every girl that is watching me. Wherever you may be in the world, I pray that the God will guide your path this week. God will shine upon you this week. God will favor you this week. Heavens will open for you. Every single thing you've been believing God for, God will bring it to pass this week. This will be this week will be a week that you will be astounded and surprised by miracles and wonders of the Lord Almighty. May you be blessed. May you shine for God. May the light of God be all over you. May everywhere you go, may you be called the saints of the Almighty God. And may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, rest upon you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.